Welcome back again, everybody. Uh, right now, for this demonstration, I'm going to focus in on the character of Samuel L. Jackson's, um, you know, character here in Pulp Fiction, and we are going to try our best to emulate the figurative style of Richard Diebenkorn based off of uh, this other work that I have, and we're going to try to, again, uh, hybridize these two ideas here. So I am not going to get as detailed in the face and things as I did in my master copy. I am going to try to show some restraint here a little bit but we do already have um we are we already do have placed roughly speaking where the the, the head form will be we don't yet have the hands uh, or arms and things in here uh, but we will add some of that in here so we're keeping in mind with this layering idea um, i have not really gone back and erased anything um, because i'm just over painting so i'm going to place in generally where i think uh, this figure's forearm would be on this table and the elbow um, and I'm just going to fill that in and we're going to layer over top of it so I'm using a nice darker uh, sort of maroon dark brown color here and then we're going to get uh, this character's hand is kind of in this space here what was something I always thought was so elegant about Diebenkorn's work was some of these marks he would make to kind of generalize a form was really all that you know, we needed to understand the overlapping hands of the figure, and I'll kind of highlight this here. Like the overlapping of the hands are these really nice, sort of beautiful, like intimate moments of this pose or this figure. Um, facial expressions and things um, weren't as important either. Um, it just didn't seem to be anyways to me in my interpretation of these images. So um, what I'm going to do is actually notice to myself is that like for Samuel Jackson's face, one side, because of the light, is a lot darker um, than the other because of the way that the light's coming in from the left to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of uh, hash in. And what I mean by hash in, I'm just kind of making some quick gestures here of face um, and head form. I'm not worried too much about the details. I'm just kind of trying to generalize uh, some of this information here. So I'm just kind of being general. One side was a lot darker uh, than the other, and I can color pick, um, and I'll kind of color pick from that center point in the nose, and I'll kind of get some of that stuff going in there too. Whoop, there we go. Kind of put kind of a center area down here. I've probably said this before in other videos, but um, you know, Samuel L. Jackson, what a phenomenal actor. Um, absolutely love most of the things that he's in um, and really is a, like a really good character actor. Um, really can kind of emulate a, a, a certain personality of a character uh, very well. Um, and even his facial expressions and things, when he's not, when he's not talking, he's still saying so much. Um, so I'm going to try my best to kind of get the four the forebrow in here as well and I'm going to think about this idea of what's called like the t-zone of sort of across the eyes and down the nose so I'm gonna just quickly make this area try to appear as best I can and, and kind of generalize stuff here um, and see if I can be somewhat in keeping of Diebenkorn's style without being too too descriptive really um, and this is what the hard part is, is I'm, I'm trying to show some restraint here. Um, but my natural habit is I want to put in, uh, you know, eye forms and things. And I'm going to put in some hair uh, where that hair would be. Some of those darker values here. So I'm just trying to imagine myself if Richard Diebenkorn were to paint this, like what would be going on in his mind here um, based off of the research and things that I that I have found. So I'm going to put mouth across there he might get some of the goatee just referenced really quickly he might even get this area here might just be dark where the eye socket would be but not really not really uh detailed by any means so he wouldn't see like his eye actually being opened or anything it would just be probably dark because i'm looking at that reference i don't really see that happening as much um and i'm going to also just kind of put some darker value in the middle well and for right now I need to keep moving 
I need to keep moving and bouncing around because this is going to start to get, I'm going to start to overwork this, this area if I stay here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kind of go over top of this face um, and I'm going to use a really, really light pressure and I'm going to kind of get some darker uh, areas here. Kind of go backwards a little bit. There we go. And if I need to here in the future, I can pick color pick and I can add values back over top of this stuff uh, if I feel like for whatever reason it's not as accurate as I, I want it to be. Um, but again, I'm just trying to abstract that face uh, kind of as much as I can and let a little bit of that light into the next the next area over here and sort of where his other eye socket might be. But that's really all I'm going to do for there right now. I'm going to keep moving around here, everybody, uh, to this background because I just have to, I'm trying to do this relatively fast just to give all of you an idea of, um, you know, the time not just put in, but how quickly you can get some things, um, you know, placed in here so you can start to have some deeper discussions uh, about your work and with your work, um, you know, and, and take some more time. Like if I can get the general areas of the background and things and then I can focus in on some of these other detail areas as well. So I'm just moving around. I'm going to get to the table here in just a second too. Um, but I'm just thinking to myself of that rectang rectangular kind of idea and some of those forms in the back that I know that Deep and Corn worked on and what an iconic sort of figure in my, per my personal opinion, one of my favorite, uh, painters, um, but we all have our favorites. Let's see, I'm going to kind of keep that like that. I'll, I'll come back to this other area, but I'm going to get some of these glasses and things down here because we did notice here in Demon Corn's work, we do see like a little, I think this is like a scotch glass or something. I, I want to imagine that is, um, but maybe that's where my head's at right now. I want to imagine that's some kind of like scotch glass, really relaxing setting, maybe out on a, in a sunroom, reading a book, having a glass of scotch, relaxing. Um, so I'm going to imagine... I'm going to try to create some of these glasses and things in a very similar way. So something I'm taking note of, though, right now is that the glass is very similar in value and in hue, color, right, to some of these other areas of the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of the lighter areas of this table, like the edge over here. I'm going to color pick from there, and then I'm going to start to, uh, I'm going to create where some of these glasses and things would actually maybe be setting, and I'm going to try to just quickly place in uh, where like the sugar bowl is where I think that might be and I'm going to try to imagine how pared down you know that glass that demon corn has in there um, you know and some of even too there's that little bit of a plate that peeks out right there um, and that's just a couple quick gestures really um, but that's what happens when you're when you become a master painter you really don't need a lot to communicate an idea um, and I think Demon Cord really, really did a great job when it came to that, is that he would just sort of quickly make a mark um, and then let that be and let that live as it is. So, like, that's going to be that plate. I feel okay with that right now. These other cups and things will just kind of make some marks and put those in here with that lighter blue that we used as well. And some of the stuff that I was really concerned about uh, in my master copy, I'm letting some of those ideas kind of fall away because I'm... I'm trying to bridge some gaps here. This little sugar Splenda container, little bowl. Gotta put that there too. And there's a little plate underneath this character's hand. So I'm just gonna, I'm actually just gonna make that full plate and then I'm gonna go back over later and overpaint where his hand is so we won't even see uh, these marks. So I'm just gonna, I'm painting in that stuff there. I'm just using a really small sized brush right now. Um, and then we'll we'll keep jumping around here, everybody, but get a couple more of these glasses in here, and we can have some fun. We can kind of move the stuff around. We don't have to be hyper, hyper accurate about them by any means. So I'm going to put, like, I'm going to put another plate here just as sort of my own information I'm putting on the surface here. I'm going to put another plate here just kind of quickly. Now they're all the same sort of hue. I can go in and I'm going to adjust that here in our next video.